Hey there, and welcome back to Under the Hat. This is episode two. My name is Nick Boley. I'm a professional television and film actor and producer. And on this episode, we are going to talk about how I used Blackmagic cameras and the DaVinci Resolve ecosystem to become a professional filmmaker. And with that, let's get into it. Becoming a legitimate filmmaker is not easy. There's so many hoops you have to jump through, things you have to know, gear, knowledge, industry, all kinds of different things that come to the plate when you really, really get into it. And one of the first things that we need to learn if we're going to be filmmakers is how to capture our stories with a device. So when I was starting my business, I was looking all over the place to find the best camera for good cost of entry, high quality production, nice picture quality. And at the time, which was in 2018, 19, I came across the Blackmagic 6K. And it has provided me with a tool that not only just the camera, but the actual post-production ecosystem as well, the NLE, has been an absolutely outstanding learning tool. It has been something that has allowed me to upgrade my storytelling, to be able to pursue my mission, which is to heal through the power of the stories that we live and tell, and to have a lot of fun doing it, making some really beautiful stuff. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about black magic, a little bit about the DaVinci Resolve ecosystem, and maybe give you guys a push towards that uh, decision, because for me, it has been one of the best decisions I could have made when starting my business. Uh, because of the cost of entry, because of the picture quality, because of the entire ecosystem and support and learning that's involved with Da Vinci and their black magic design. And in this video, I hope to give you a little insight into their ecosystem, a little bit of understanding of their cameras, the costs of entry, and hopefully help you towards your journey of becoming a filmmaker. And this episode is definitely dedicated to technical filmmaking. I'm going to go over some specs. I'm going to go over cost. I'm going to go over some of the benefits, uh, pros and cons of using the camera. And also, I'm going to give you guys, if you can't afford the camera yet, a couple tools that you can use on your phone uh, to be able to bring your filmmaking and storytelling abilities with digital media to the next level. So let's start with the price of entry. Now they're still selling the Pocket 4K camera and it's got a pretty low cost of entry at $1,850. Uh, that doesn't include your lenses and stuff like that, but it does give you a very low cost of entry for a beautiful picture on 4K images. So it's not a bad call if it's something that you're trying to stay cost effective, but you're also trying to get great picture quality. It's a nice camera to start with, and it has been since it came out. The earlier versions were a little bit uh, lighter, <laughs> but the second version, I believe, of the Pocket 4K was uh, a viable option for many filmmakers to be able to, you know, make beautiful independent films. The next camera up is the Pocket 6K camera. That's the one that I got. This isn't the pro level. This is just the 6K upgrade from the Pocket 4K. And it doesn't come with ND filters, which is something that's really nice about the Pocket for, uh, 6K Pro, but it does have amazing picture quality. They did make a few uh, firmware upgrades in the course of putting out the 4K to the 6K. So there's some really nice, um, camera stabilization in post and gyroscopic recording in the 6K that uh, allows you to smooth out your, your movement of your camera uh, after the fact. And the file size is pretty large, but the capabilities and the interfacing in the camera to be able to quickly adjust your file size, your specs, any part of your ISO or anything that you really need when you're doing filmmaking and cinematic work, it's very accessible with the interface. And so uh, it's really easy to change your, you know, your bit depth, your compression, um, your file sizes to crop in on your sensor. It's very accessible. So it's been a beautiful way to not only understand what those different pieces are, but quickly access them and be able to implement them at, you know, a moment's notice. So all of the Blackmagic cameras have this beautiful interface that I think 
the industry is still trying to catch up to you. It's probably the best interface out there when it comes to cinematic cameras, and it's just so easy to get around. Highly recommend if you're trying to learn um, all the different specs and you're getting into filmmaking, Blackmagic has a great system because it's not only a beautiful shot and a beautiful uh, device, but it provides you with really clear um, settings um, and they're well laid out so that you can see how things are related just by using it over and over again. So you will learn filmmaking just by going through the interface and understanding what different things do. The 6K, uh, not the Pro, the 6K is coming in at around $2,700 right now, not with your lenses or anything like that. And the 6K does require a little bit of extra building, which will bring your price up. Still a beautiful cost of entry for a 6K camera that competes with RED and all these other things too. Uh, the next again is the 6K Pro coming in at 3650. Um, it is a beautiful camera that has internal NDs. It has a articulating monitor, which the 6K Gen 2 doesn't. And it's able to um, do a couple other things that the, uh, the Gen 2 isn't. One is in-camera stabilization, uh, which is really, really nice. And it just adds to the gyroscopic recording and post-production stabilization that you're able to do in DaVinci Resolve. Um, another camera in the lineup is the Ursa 4.6K. This is their Gen 2, uh, a beautiful camera I've used many times on different projects. It's gonna give you that 4.6K full frame, um, but it doesn't have some of the light bodiness. It doesn't have some of the accessibility that the Pocket 6K Pro or the 6K does, or the 4K for that matter. They're often used, the pockets, for you know um, rigging on vehicles, um, for stunt cameras, um, for you know action-based cameras because they're so light and they're they're very uh, fluid. They're a little bit clunky if you're just hand holding them, which has been one thing that if you're into hand holding, uh, your camera might be a little bit odd. It's got a kind of an odd body, but it's still it's still a great piece regardless. And then the next one up, they've just released a few other ones. They've released some broadcast 4 and 6K upgrades recently, which come with the internal NDs and a bunch of other features that are focused more on broadcast work. And then they have the Ursa 12K, which is a beast of a camera. It shoots 12K, which you're like, how, why would we need that? But it does, and it allows you to do incredible cropping um, in post and maintain a really low noise floor for your picture. I've used it on some feature documentaries and it is a beautiful camera. Um, the one thing that's really nice about Blackmagic uh, design and the DaVinci ecosystem is that even when we had an issue with the 12K on set, we were able to get in contact with customer service like while we were on set and troubleshoot an issue that we ended up solving uh, through working with them. So not only is the camera great, not only is the uh, NLE great, not only is the additional learning and all the other stuff that comes with DaVinci amazing and it's free online for you to take a look at, um, but their customer service is really great as well. So that was something that was really nice to run into when we were in a problem situation. So. We have these beautiful cameras and they can shoot in 12 bit, like beautiful color. They have amazing um, light control. You're able to do some, some beautiful stuff to retain at your highlights and reduce noise in your picture in DaVinci Resolve later on. And it just makes for, the, for a beautiful picture quality. And someone who understands how to use the camera can really, really make incredible images happen. So it's been an absolute pleasure to work with the camera and I'm always learning new stuff. Um, you can attach them to all kinds of different Bluetooth devices. You can do a lot of different things with them. It attaches to your phone. Um, you can, you know, use your gimbal and attach gimbals to PlayStation 4 controllers and do all kinds of really cool stuff. So um, the process of understanding my camera and the devices that I work with with the Blackmagic 6K, which is the one that I rely on most, has taught me so much about filmmaking. And I am, you know, a little bit indebted <laughs> to Blackmagic and the entire system because it's provided me with a robust set of tools in cameras and also in post-production 
to be able to not only accomplish great work, but understand how to do it, including the additional learning that you can find on YouTube and on their site and including the free upgrades and including the free to use program. If you're not going to go with the full studio program, which gives you a great opportunity to learn and color and do things that DaVinci's known for while, you know, shooting on your phone and really learning how to make the most of simple storytelling before you get into these larger cameras. So now let's get into the NLE DaVinci Resolve and talk a little bit about the pros and cons of using this incredibly powerful program. DaVinci Resolve, where do I start? First off, I guess, thank you. Thank you, Blackmagic Design and DaVinci Resolve. You've created some incredible stuff here. Um, and I highly recommend any young filmmaker who's, you know, dabbled with Premiere or, you know, looked into Final Cut Pro or done any of the other NLEs to definitely consider DaVinci Resolve because it is robust, it is fluid, it is intuitive, and the more that you use it, the faster things go and the more, the more beautiful your results are. So let's talk about the color bit rate. So in DaVinci and with the Blackmagic cameras, they access a 12 bit color range, which allows for a much more complete rendition of our color spectrum. Um, and when it comes to entering the camera and then being reproduced so that we can actually see it. Uh, most other cameras run on a 10 bit or an eight bit uh, and they show in their color depth and in their color richness and their avoidance of noise and these types of things. So one benefit of working with Blackmagic cameras is that they have a really, really, really nice color uh, ecosystem to be able to manage those colors. So we have uh, the 10 bit and we have 12 bit, we have older stuff that's eight bit uh, and the color depth just gets better and better with more bits, right? The issue is obviously that there's a uh, file size and data that starts to encumber a system if it becomes too much. So if you're going to be using these, you know, really rich color, like super raw files, you're going to need a pretty robust system to be able to run them or create, you know, the, the right proxies to be able to run your session. There's a bunch of other things that you can do, like minimize, like shrinking your timeline uh, format down or aspect ratios and stuff like that. Um, and a few other settings in DaVinci, which again, we can get into if you're interested in that, let me know and I can share that soon as well. Uh, but the 12-bit color system is beautiful and DaVinci has been well known for many, many years since its inception for its color management and color correction abilities. Many of the best studios in the world use DaVinci to color their work. Uh, and I can see why there's amazing understanding, incredible tools, everything that you need is there. And in the studio version, you have every tool you can imagine all the way from entry and media management through to editing and cutting your footage to sound and, you know, uh, CGI and graphics and compositing, and then, uh, out to delivery. And it's all really beautifully organized on the bottom of your screen. Just like right here, you get this little tab and it moves you through the production process in a very functional and appropriate way so that you're not encumbering yourself by working against yourself or jumping the shark in any fashion. So uh, again, that's kind of part of the intuitive side of DaVinci Resolve, which I'm really grateful that I didn't invest too much in Premiere. I have all these friends now who, uh, who have you know relied on Premiere and I still use Photoshop. I still use Adobe, so don't get me wrong. Adobe's useful and there's some great pieces to it, uh, After Effects and everything. But you can do so much of that in Resolve. You can, you can make incredible photos in Resolve. You can make incredible videos in Resolve. You can do all kinds of editing. You can do all kinds of, you know, After Effects based stuff, uh, animations, compositing, 3D compositing, virtual cameras. You can do all of that stuff in, in DaVinci, in the studio version, which if you buy it outright, it's just 300 and I think it's $300 plus tax or 300 something dollars. If you just, and you get it forever. It's not like Adobe where you subscribe to it and you get it, uh, take it away if your credit card expires or something like that. It's for life and they keep upgrading it and you keep getting new firmware upgrades for your cameras if you have them, which if you have a DaVinci or a Blackmagic camera, 
you get the software with the camera for free, the full studio version. And you get to put it on two devices, which is very, very helpful. When it really comes down to it, DaVinci is providing any filmmaker who's been either new to filmmaking or who is moving from Premiere and other conventional ways of filmmaking. It provides this robust all-in-one program and data management software with the cameras and everything that is so efficient and is it uses different principles in your GPU and all these different things to be able to run what it does. DaVinci is a very, very unique program. It's super, super powerful. And you can get it, like I said, for free. Go download it right now. Just go to blackmagicdesign.com. I'll put the link down in the video here. And go download the free version right now. If you want to upgrade, you can upgrade later. You can do a ton of stuff in the free version. There's some limitations, of course, and you don't get some of the like fancy effects that you do in Fusion or in the color grading tabs. But you can still do incredible work. And I highly, highly, highly recommend jumping in, learning, going on YouTube. And they have a, a huge portfolio of uh, classes for every different facet of Da Vinci's uh, production process. Uh, they have really great classes on their cameras. They have all kinds of stuff that's been super helpful for me to upgrade myself. And I didn't, I didn't go to school for filmmaking. I went to school for sound and sound production and sound design, but I've learned everything I know about cameras and about filmmaking and cinematography now using many, many cameras, many different brands of cameras, but um, Da Vinci's provided me with an incredible learning tool and an absolutely outstanding set of tools to be able to deliver award-winning work now, which has been thrilling and it's like a dream. It really is. So thank you again, Da Vinci. Thank you, Black Magic. I think you guys are amazing. A couple other things that um, are great, and these are more so for 18, DaVinci 18, which has just come out not long ago. Um, there's a, a new facet of the program that allows you to do collaborative work. So you can collaborate in real time in the editing space, in the post-production arena with other people around the world, which is amazing. Amazing. The second thing is they have some new tools like Depth Mask that allows you to really refine your masking and highlight subjects kind of like you would like with your you know subject tool in photoshop for video which is outstanding it's going to allow things to pop a lot more to clarify our backgrounds and our subjects and just create way better pictures um i'm still on 17 because word of warning if you move from 17 to 18 the timelines don't transfer so you'll lose the work if you go from 17 to 18 without doing the proper uh, backend transfers to be able to make your file reopen. I was running a session and it was for this proof of concept Western that uh, you may have seen if you're following me at all. Uh, we've been putting some uh, notices out about it. But anyways, so we had this proof of concept and I went to take an AU plugin for delay and uh, in Fairlight, which is in DaVinci Resolve, their audio production uh, suite. And I, I took the delay and I put it on a new channel. I think I copy pasted it onto another channel and it just froze my, my session. And then I ended up having to close it down. Um, I didn't have project backups set up and it wasn't reopening. It would just stop at 58%, stop at 58%. I was like, what do I do? What do I do with this? Thankfully, like I mentioned, um, we have two versions of DaVinci Resolve that we get when we get a camera. When I got my camera, I took one version, I put it on my Mac Pro, and I took another version and I put it on my MacBook. And thankfully, they've been you know, upgrading at the same rate. I've kept them both with the same uh, version. And so I was able to save or export my project from my Mac Pro and bring it onto my other computer, my MacBook, which doesn't have the plugins in it that that are um, on my Mac Pro. And the session opened and I was able to re-export it, resave it, bring a new version back into my Mac Pro and everything opened fine once I had deleted those plugins. And I just ended up replacing them and finding better ones, honestly. So um, it worked out that way, but it was nice to have those two versions on two different devices that I was able to work in a collaborative workspace with, right? So. There's another benefit. 
to being able to have those two versions of it and to be able to open it um, on a new device. I tried a lot of stuff within the Mac Pro itself, but I ended up just having to, you know, export, change some things in the session, resave, uh, export again, and then the session worked. So um, maybe that is the best thing that you get out of this video. But it, regardless, uh, what I want to say is that the DaVinci workspace and their ecosystem is super strong, very robust, constantly being upgraded along with their cameras, along with the firmware that goes in their cameras. And it's just been such a valuable uh, relationship. <laughs> they don't even know me personally, <laughs> but they're, I'm not affiliated with Blackmagic at all. I just really, really like their stuff. I'm going to continue to use it. I can't wait to upgrade my cameras uh, for the company and just take it to the next level. Um, and there's also great things like the Atom, uh, which allows you to broadcast or live stream um, in a beautiful way with incredible tools as well. So um, I just honestly, if I was to look at any other company out there, I don't, I really don't think that there's anyone who's building the cameras, the software, the ecosystem, creating soft, like data management that's so capable of color that's uh, in, the, in the, the space of compositing, 3D compositing, animation, that's all in one. I just don't know anyone else doing something like that. So if you want to learn filmmaking and you want to see what it takes to become, you know, well-versed in understanding cameras and the post-production process, if you were to do it any other way, you're going to have to buy a camera, then get an independent production NLE, probably pay subscriptions, then go on and learn individually about those programs. When if you were to take it the DaVinci route, you're going to have this cohesive all in one system, plus education, plus support, plus everything all in one that is very well understood and constantly being upgraded. So I guess what we should probably do now is talk a little bit about the pros and cons of having these cameras. Uh, I've kind of mentioned a few things throughout this video, but I think that maybe we should go into a more refined list of things that really set this camera apart and why you might want to consider it or maybe not consider it. So pros, beautiful color, amazing picture quality really robust uh, software and post-production ecosystem, constant upgrades, all in one program. All that stuff is amazing. You can continuously learn. They're always putting out new stuff as well. So that's one, that's a, a good solid list. The cameras are incredible. Most of them are used in films on Netflix. The pockets are for some reason not Netflix approved, but they are used in Netflix shows as B cameras and things like that. Uh, part of the reason comes from their time code um, issue. But if you use something like a tentacle uh, and you sync it properly, then that's all out the window. There's no need to worry about it. And I've used that system many times. Those are a few of the pros, uh, a couple cons. Another con that I've noticed is that uh, if you're used to something like a Canon DSLR or continuous shooting thing like that, you don't get autofocus. There's things like snap focus, which you can use on uh, a button on the camera or on your phone where it just snaps to focus on a subject, but uh, it finds it, you know, it takes a little adjusting and it's not a continuous autofocus. So that's one drawback, but if you're shooting cinematic stuff, usually you have a focus puller, you have a second AC or first AC and second AC maybe, and you have people who are, you know, helping you capture that picture. It's more of a team effort, right? So it depends what kind of shooting you want to do. If you're wanting to do run and gun, um, you know, vlogging, if you're trying to do like action sports or um, anything that requires a lot of dynamic movement, you might want to rely more on a continuous focus uh, camera like a Sony, which has great autofocus or um, Canon, which also is very good. You know, the the Mark line is amazing. So uh, yeah, the 5D, sorry, 5D, 4Ds. These, these cameras have really nice autofocus uh, and good bit depth, uh, but you're losing a little bit of that color power when you move away from DaVinci. So uh, definitely, pros and cons to each camera. 
Some cameras like the Ari have a little bit more of a, a blue uh, tone to them, whereas uh, the Black Magic tends to have a little bit of a magenta, a little bit of a warmer tone to its raw format, which it's quite easy to fix. And if you know what you're doing um, in post, then it's negligible. So uh, there's another con, um, a pro and con, I suppose. If you like magenta, maybe it's a pro. A few other things that is a, a con about something like the 6K, which is the one that I use, is that it is a little bit difficult to find that uh, proper f-stop when there's no ND filters. You either have to buy additional lens filters, NDs that go over top your lens, um, or you're having to you know, bring your f-stop way down and compromise depth of field and things like that in order to be able to keep your light uh, intact. So the Pocket 6K Pro um, and the Ursa line that has the ND filters, those definitely come in handy. So if you can't get the, uh, you know, the Pro or better, then um, you're going to have to get ND filters, which can be a con as well. Another con that I mentioned earlier is that with the 6K and the 4K, you're going to have to build them up a little bit in order for them to be, you know, really functional cinematic cameras. Uh, whereas the 6K Pro uh, is a pretty robust camera on its own that doesn't really require additional pieces like the 6K does or the 4K. So that's another con, I guess, as well. And one other con, I guess, that you could look at from the perspective of a uh, uh, you know, someone who's working in DaVinci and Adobe is that some of the cross platform work can be a little bit cumbersome. It's not necessarily linked like it is in Premiere. So if you have collaborators that end up working or relying on Premiere, sometimes it can be a little bit like nah, to work with. I've been able uh, to successfully transfer XMLs and EDLs and different file uh, lists and things like that in order to transfer sessions from one type to another. But uh, I would, I would say that it has been like a little bit frustrating and a little bit like, ah, I don't know how this is going to work out. So I would say that's a con too, but if you want to work, uh, within one single program, I just, I just don't know what other camera to program to delivery system is out there. That's so well constructed. And like I said, there's an, uh, an incredible amount of learning that happens when you get the camera, when you access the learning that's involved in black magic design and just by using it, like it's incredible how intuitive some of this stuff can be once you just like start using it. So I highly recommend if you're considering moving from Premiere to DaVinci, Try it, <laughs> try and jump into it. It's a little bit clunky to start, but once you get it, it's fast. Like it's very fast. You can edit quickly in Premiere. You can do it just the same in DaVinci. You just gotta learn your keystrokes and a few other things and you'll get there. And if you're first time filmmaker, if you're just trying to learn, if you don't know where to start, this is definitely a place that I would recommend starting. You get a low cost of entry, you get incredible tools and you can produce something studio level if you have the knowledge and the team very quickly within this workspace. So highly recommend. Finally, what I want to talk about is filmmaking for those who can't afford a Blackmagic camera right now. I know $1,800 for the 4K is still not cheap. And if you're getting lenses and stuff, it adds up. So if you have a phone right now, you can make films. <laughs> and I know that's said and people are like, oh, I can't use it. Every time I shoot on my phone, it looks stupid. But part of the reason for that is because you may not have the app that you need to be able to make clear pictures and to be selective and have control over the different aspects of making a film with your phone. If you're just using your phone video camera, it's not gonna be so good. So uh, I recommend not relying on that. But there is an app called Filmic Pro for those who got it a while ago, there's Filmic Legacy. Uh, Filmic Legacy was a one-time payment. Filmic Pro now, I think it's like $2 a month or $3 a month or something like that. And in that program, you're able to control the camera in your phone very precisely, change frame rates, change resolutions, change file types, um, all kinds of different things in Filmic Pro. It's highly useful and you, some of the best filmmakers in the world who have made iPhone videos or 
smartphone videos have used this app to be able to create those pictures and those images. So uh, if you're looking for something that, you know, is a cheap cost of entry, a couple dollars a month for a program that allows you to shoot raw video that you could take into the free version of DaVinci and color and deliver um, is a really good option to be able to cultivate your, your filmmaking and your storytelling and your uh, understanding of you know, screen and framing and, and post-production and all these things. So, you know, two, three dollars a month plus a free version of DaVinci. Um, and if you're running, you know, relatively low file sizes on your computer, even if it's a cheap computer, you should be able to get away with it. You can easily create proxies or smaller versions of those videos in DaVinci with like couple clicks of a button. And if you guys need to know how to do that, please let me know. I can also add that video. Um, but it's a very, very functional thing to use to be able to learn filmmaking. This has been an absolutely incredible tool for me. I've gone from not making films to making films, award-winning films, to you know, working on producing television series and working on feature documentaries, feature films, all these different things that have been able to happen because I have this camera that I'm shooting on right now. And I have the ecosystem of DaVinci Resolve to be able to create the films that I do. So if you're looking for a camera, if you're looking for a new editing software, if you're looking to change things up a little bit, I definitely recommend DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic Design as your next step. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna get some beautiful images out of it and join a community of people that are as enthusiastic about the cameras as I am. <laughs> Maybe that's enough. <laughs> Maybe that's enough and just be around somebody who's excited about cameras like that. But it's an amazing tool. If you're getting really specky about things, the, the lenses that I use on the Blackmagic Pocket are EF mount lenses. I use the Canon L series lens and I have a Ninja 5 as well, a Ninja V with my rig that's supplementing my monitoring. So uh, they have a, you know, a decent monitor on the back of the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, but it's nice to have that Ninja 5 on there as well. And like I said, I have the small rig camera uh, cage that allows, you know, protection and mounting of different devices. So like I said before, if you're going to get the 6K, you're going to have to build it up a little bit, but man, I don't know what to say. It's so well worth it. The pictures are amazing. They're amazing. You can even like take stills and, and create really high megapixel images just from your stills on the cinema camera. So it's been a very good tool. Um, and I, I would recommend it to anybody who's just getting into it or looking for a change. <laughs> You found this helpful or you need you know more questions answered feel free to give us a like and a subscribe toss some comments down there and i will answer any questions that you have this is episode two we're just getting going this is something i'm going to continue to do i really hope that it's allowing you to you know find inspiration get some new resources and tools even right now if you don't have any of the programs you can go on youtube you can look up stuff about compositing. You can look up stuff about color grading. You can start to understand filmmaking a little bit better just from taking in the learning. And then that's going to get your reticular activating system, that thing that used to teach us how to find berries when it was 10,000 years ago and we were hunter-gatherers. It's going to turn that system on so that you become aware of more opportunities to advance that learning. You start to see connections in your life that involve these particular topics. And you can start right now. You can get the free version, you can shoot on your phone, you can start the learning and you can start right now. It's pretty cool for really, really like no cost, barely. So uh, please, please, if you're interested, go. Get in there. I welcome you to the community. Let's, let's make some films, tell some stories, heal the world through what we do. And I hope that this was a helpful episode for you. I'm going to leave it there today. Wishing many blessings to you people around you, those that you love, and your adversaries. I hope that they find what it is that they're looking for and that it leads to harmony for you and for them. Anyways, that's it for now. My name's Nick Boley. Good day, chap.